Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> if that's I dream of genie with the light brown hair, I sure don't recognize it. What's the matter? Don't you know anything about jazz? Well, if that's a sample, I don't. Want to know a secret? What? <laughs> I don't know anything about it either. <laughs> sure got to be big business, though. Yeah, I guess. Somebody like Dizzy Ferguson could afford to hire a helicopter to come all the way up to Hartford and take him back to town for a one-night stand. It's got to be big business. Well, I have heard about Dizzy Ferguson. He's one of the top jazz artists around. I never met any of those guys personally. Then you're going to get your chance. We're coming into Hartford now. Dig that crazy bongo bitch. Like that's me. My name's Chuck Martin. P.T. Moore. Man, take those crazy threads. Oh, just a set of working clothes. Should we get started? I mean, man, like, is it safe? Safe as a baby's cradle. Man, when I was a cradle cat, I fell out of things so often on my head, the pads sound like a bongo party. You're kidding. I wouldn't put you on, Petey boy. Wow, I gotta make it with your tailor. <laughs> living on cloud nine, but for real. You like it, huh? I dig it the most. Like, uh, if you pardon the pun, it's real fast. <laughs> well, we are going to get you there in plenty of time. Yeah, I never would have made the scene if I had to travel on wheels. What's the matter? Did you oversleep? You know I did. When I came to, it's like the clock flipped its lid, you know. And the cat at the hotel said to me, why don't you fly? I said, man, like I've been flying all night. <laughs> I try to make a deal with the local cats. You know, the flying cats in town? Couldn't do it. That's why I happened to make the telephone bit with you guys. Man, this is the wildest. Well, we're glad you enjoyed it. It's over now, though. That's where you're going. That's the Blue Cat Club? Yeah, it sure is. Man, it sure looks different from up here. put you on my tailor. This is getting to be ridiculous. Honey. Me. Chuck Martin, Petey Moore, this is, um, um, what's your name again, honey? Betty. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Betty. Let's fold in, huh? Hello, Betty. Yeah. Hi. Hey, what was the name of that last number you played? Name? Man, that hasn't been written yet. That's like from tomorrow. It's about as modern as music can get, isn't it? Modern? They may launch me at Cape Canaveral. <laughs> <laughs> Dizzy, what's Cape Canaveral? That's a swinging joint where everybody counts backwards. <laughs> Uh-oh. Daddy was gonna get put down. This may be a drag. Hello, Dizzy. Hey, Cynthia, glad you fell in. I gotta meet some friends of mine. Chuck Martin, little old Petey Moore, and this is, uh, what's your name again, honey? Betty. Cynthia Fairchild. Oh, won't you join us, Miss Fairchild? Was it simply my overwrought imagination, or did I have a date to drive you down here from Hartford? Dizzy's going to get a launch at Cape Canaveral. Is it too utterly much to expect an answer to my question? Uh, Isn't me. that elegant about Cape Canaveral? What is this? Well, honey, why don't you go make like a long distance telephone call, huh? But I don't know any out of towners. Well, like it's some real kicks. Come on, make new friends. I think maybe we'll be running along, too. No, no, hang around, man. Well, Sit down. No. We'll ball it up. I think you three will dig each other. These cats have a clam bake called the Whirly Birds, diddly copters. Like, man, it's the wildest. Why did you let me drive all the way to Hartford on a wild goose chase? Like I forgot, baby. You forgot? Yeah, like I forgot. 
What right have you to suck? Stop bugging me, will you, baby? Listen, you don't own me. Listen, I've known all you've done for me, but you don't own me. Nobody owns Dizzy Ferguson. Now stop bugging me, will you, please? You want to go along for the ride, Craze, but stop bugging me. Nobody speaks to me like that. And you're goofing, baby. I just did. Dizzy, can't we just... Stop bugging me, will you, baby? All right, Dizzy. Anything you say. Rootsville. Now, let's have a good time. Our drinks are on me. Little old Petey, what are you going to have? Oh, coffee's fine, thanks. Hi, Diz. This is my night to be bugged. <laughs> Always making with the jokes, eh, Dizzy boy? Hey, uh, aren't you going to introduce me to your friends? Miss Fairchild, I know, of course. You two are quite a night, am I understand? Chuck Martin, Petey Moore, Lenny Drake. Say, I know you from someplace. Have I ever seen your picture in the paper? I got a rotten press in this town. Every time some small-time hood holds up a gasoline station, they haul me down for questioning. Don't send your laundry out, Lenny boy, like this is a private party. I just want to talk some business. I don't want to talk any business with you. I don't want to work any of your joints. But you want to make any money? Not that kind of money. Now fade, huh? Now look. I don't get pushed around. You come to this town, you're working a joint, they're all packed, mine are empty. I don't like it. From now on, you come into this town or any town I got a club and you work for me. Fade, will you? Will you do a fade? I'm warning you, Ferguson. Must we put up with this? You know, Mr. Drake, it seems to me for a two-bit tough guy, you're tossing around a lot of weight you don't even have. I ought to poke you right in the nose. Would you like to try it? You're not important enough for me to bother with. You just think over what I said. Listen, Daddy, you're like the acoustics in this room are like from no place, you know what I mean? I can't even hear you, man. Do a fade, will you? Well, that was charming. What do we play now? Well, if it's any kind of a game Lenny Drake plays, uh, I don't like the rules. Could he really make trouble for you? Like he's from no place. Anyway, I'll be out of this town tomorrow. You're playing a date in Waterbury, aren't you? You speak true, baby. You speak true. I'll drive you up. I just got my new car. I'll pick you up at... Stop, baby. Stop. Take five, honey. I'm going to Waterbury with the Whirly Birds. I'm on a new kick. Well, our passenger is just about due. He'll be late. <laughs> what a character he is. Yeah. He's really not a bad guy. Oh, I like him. I like him fine. I just mean he'll be, uh, like late. <laughs> hey, you all right? What's all the shooting about? Don't ask me. I ducked after I heard the first shot. Ask him. Maybe he knows. Ask who? My passenger, him. I mean, after I heard that first shot, I hit the floor. Where did the shots come from? Well, from another car. What kind of car? I don't know. I kind of felt it out of the side of my eyes. I was making a dive for the boards. <laughs> yeah, two shots, and then it dug out fast. Okay, that'll be all. I'll let you know if I want you for anything else. Okay. You guys be willing to testify you heard Drake threaten to kill Dizzy Ferguson last night? Well, it seems to me that's what he meant, but uh, I don't think those were his exact words. Well, what were his exact words? Well, I don't remember the exact words either, but he's making himself pretty clear. I think I'll pay that little hood a visit. You know where to find him? I should. I brought him in often enough. See ya. And it's your deal, Eddie. Thanks. <laughs> Again. How are you, Lieutenant? Care to take a hand? How long's this game been going on? Now, what are you roasting me for now? I ask you a question, Drake. Now, look, Lieutenant. You're not gonna pull me downtown just because I'm playing poker with my friends, are you? I might. It's getting pretty lonesome down there without you hanging around. Now, I'm gonna ask you once more, how long has this game been going on? I've been here all afternoon, and I got three witnesses to prove it. Well, 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 well. 
Got yourself a nice little alibi, huh? Alibi? What do I need an alibi for? Like the time Dizzy Ferguson was killed. Somebody knocked off Dizzy Ferguson. Oh, no. You didn't know anything about it, huh? Oh, my word of honor, Lieutenant. I'll need something a little more reliable than that. Hey, now, wait a minute. Dizzy was my pal. He was a friend of mine. Uh-huh. Is that why you threatened to kill him? Oh. You've been talking to those helicopter jockeys, huh? You did threaten them, huh? Now, wait a minute. This is another one of your frames. I got three guys here who will prove I've been here all afternoon. This is one rap you ain't gonna pin on me. I'll try, Drake. It ain't gonna do you no good. Well, that's all right. I get paid anyway. Look, do me a favor, will you? Why should I? All right, then do yourself a favor. Don't leave town. I'll be seeing you. Let me know where he goes. And don't lose him. Mr. Martin, Mr. Moore. That's right. I'm glad to find you in. Well, we were supposed to be out on a job, but our last client met with an unfortunate accident. Yes, I know. That musician fellow, Ferguson. My daughter and I heard about it on the radio. No kidding, is it on the air already? My name's Fairchild, Roger Fairchild. Any relation to Cynthia Fairchild? She's my daughter. Oh, won't you sit down? Thank you. She told me she'd met you. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Yeah, I'm very sorry. Your daughter must be very broken up about what happened to Ferguson. I understand they were rather close friends. Cynthia's quite young and rather impetuous in forming friendships. Many of her social activities are ill-advised. I suppose that's a phase that many young people go through nowadays. Uh, Mr. Fairchild, I might be a little slow, but uh, what has this got to do with us? I'll come to the point. There'll be an investigation, of course, of this musician person's murder. Cynthia was apparently one of the last people to see him alive. The police might want to question her. I'd rather that they didn't. Well, I still don't know what you want us to do. Cynthia is what I believe the newspapers call newsworthy. Now, I can control the newspapers up to a point. I knew about her friendship with this musician. I didn't approve, of course, but I knew it was only temporary. Now, I think I can keep references to it out of the papers, if I can have your cooperation. How do you mean? Well, there really isn't any point in your telling the police, if you're questioned, that Cynthia was with that young man last night. There's really no reason for her name to be dragged into this unpleasantness. Uh, Mr. Fairchild, I can appreciate your feelings, but you know perjury is a pretty serious crime. I wasn't suggesting perjury, Mr. Martin. I was merely suggesting that you use your best judgment to try to protect the name of a young lady who doesn't deserve to be subjected to notoriety merely because of youthful bad judgment. Well, I'm in a position, Mr. Martin, to show my appreciation in a substantial way. Uh, Mr. Fairchild, we're not looking for any handouts here. There's certain matters in the way of business that I could... That won't be necessary, Mr. Fairchild. We don't want to see your daughter's name brought into this if it's not necessary. We'll do the best we can, but we can't make any promises. I don't suppose I can ask for more than that. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time and courtesy. Well, there's a man that thinks a lot of his daughter. Yeah, except he's doing all his thinking with his money. Yeah. Hi, Lieutenant. Got the case all wrapped up? Oh, I feel dirty every time I get near that Lenny Drake. It'd be a real pleasure when I can get him put away for good. Has my office been trying to reach me? No, no calls yet. What'd you find out from Drake? No, not much yet. Listen, was there any conversation between him and Cynthia Fairchild last night? No, well, not that I remember. Oh, by the way, Lieutenant, Roger Fairchild just left here a few minutes ago. Oh? Yeah, he heard about the shooting on the radio. He didn't waste any time getting here. What'd he want? Well, I guess he wanted to keep his daughter's name out of it. Oh, he did, did he? Well, you can hardly blame him. I doubt that you'd know anything anyway. Maybe. 
Well, uh, Lieutenant, you know the way I see her, I think she's just kind of a young, mixed-up girl. But the father's a pretty good skate. If we can avoid giving him a hard time, I'd like to. Well, look, Chuck, I don't want to give anybody a hard time, but I got a murder rap on my hands, you know? Excuse me. Where did you go, Brady? Oh, yeah, just a moment. Lieutenant Scott. What? Where? Okay. Look, I had a tail on Drake and he shook him. He's in a yellow convertible going north on Highway 67. Let's go flying, huh, boys? Right. <laughs> just the kind of a punk who would call attention to himself with a car like that. I told you to stay put. It's free country, ain't it? I didn't kill Ferguson. What are you running for, then? Because you're trying to put a frame on me. All right, Drake, that's enough. I'm charging you with murder. Yeah? You got nothing to hold me on. I'm going to put you where I can keep my eyes on you. Right in jail. Thanks, Chuck. You handled that helicopter real nice. I should have felt that you watched last night. I wish I had tried, old buddy. You'd have saved us all a lot of trouble today. Glad to help out with that. All right, come on. Well, that's that. Maybe that's that. But I think the lieutenant has a long ways to go before he has a case against Drake. He'll do it. He's a pretty sharp detective. Whaley Bridge Incorporated. Yes, lieutenant. What? You're kidding. I'll be darned. Oh, sure, then we'll wait for you here. Right, and thanks. What was that all about? You remember when Fairchild told us that he heard about the killing on the radio? Yeah. Well, when Mr. Fairchild was here, Dizzy Ferguson's killing hadn't been announced on the air yet. Well, then Fairchild's the killer. Maybe. Maybe. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Miss Fairchild. Are uh, you by any chance free this afternoon? I'd like to charter you for a flight to Waterbury. I'd like to hear Dizzy play tonight. Well, you know, Dizzy Ferguson's not playing tonight. He's not? He's not playing any place anymore. I don't understand. Dizzy Ferguson's dead. Dead? Oh, no. Oh, no. No. Oh. It's a 
pretty good act you're putting on, Miss Fairchild. What are you talking about? You knew Dizzy Ferguson was dead. You told your father about it. That's the reason he came here, to try to put you in the clear. He'd do anything for you. This is ridiculous. How would I know Dizzy was dead? You didn't hear about it on the radio because you killed him. He deserved it. He... Don't tell us about it, Miss Fairchild. You tell your story to the police. Put down that telephone. You know, for a guess, I'd say that the bullets in Dizzy Ferguson came out of that gun. I imagine the ballistics department would like to have a look at it. I don't intend to be around long enough to talk to the police. Leaving town? Of course. How far do you think you'll get? The police will have you at a roadblock before you've gone five miles. I'm not driving, Mr. Moore. Oh? I'm flying. And your helicopter. Now, you really don't think you can force us to chauffeur you around, do you? Hardly. You see, among the many things my doting father did for me was to treat me to flying lessons. This will be a solo flight. Please don't try to stop me. boys have done a pretty fair day's work. Yeah, I hope he enjoyed watching it. Who? Well, I kind of think we had an audience in a box seat on cloud nine. <laughs>